Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. In today's episode, I'm going to be bringing you six of the best space locations on extinction in the sanctuary and how to build them. Now, like every time, allow me to just throw a disclaimer out there. I'm not the best base builder in the world, and there may well be better ways to build these bases. But I'm just trying to give you an idea and show you a couple of examples of how to build them so that when you come to build them, you have some kind of idea of what you're doing. Now, unfortunately, pretty much all of these spots are for unofficial. And that's just because unfortunately in the sanctuary, most of the spots are unofficial. I also think art's got enough exploits as it is. I'm not going to be showing you like any zipline or pelagornis spots or anything like that because I don't want to be exploiting the game anymore. If you're after official spots, I'll chuck the link in the top right now for my spots in the sunken forest. These videos take such a long time to make. So if you do enjoy, please don't forget to leave a like. I'm also going to chuck my quick guides playlist in the description. I've made loads of quick guides for Ark from taming to egg stealing and hatching to just general tips, so if you're new to work or you want to brush up and freshen up, feel free to go check that out. But anyways, let's get into the video. Coming in at number one, we have a pretty big spot. We're at about 41.3, 46.2, and we're pretty central in the sanctuary, but we're on the north side of it. So we're up pretty high, there's a few tall buildings around here, we're looking for this building with, I don't even know what to explain that as, weird shapes. We'll go with weird shapes. So all these weird shapes actually have holes in, and as you can see, you can get inside them. And once you're inside, there's a lot of room in here. Now this is one of my least favorite spots on this list personally. I'm going to show you why in a minute. But obviously each one of these holes is an entrance. So if you want to build here securely, you're going to need turrets on every single entrance. So this is going to be for a big tribe. So let's have a play around and see what we can make here. So, as you can see, I've made this completely inaccessible from ground. I've used metal gates and spikes to completely block off where anyone could land or set up a fob or anything like that. This makes it so the only real way people can raid this is to Quetzal raid it. And no one really enjoys Quetzal raiding, do they? I would also probably try and spam this entire building out like so. This makes it so that no one can build anywhere around you. As we come a bit closer then, you can see we've blocked off every single entrance with foundations and walls. Then we've chucked turrets on the ground. We've also placed down hatch frames with more turrets on. And I've done this for every single entrance. Obviously you can choose where you want your door to be or your way to get in. I've put mine right at the top. But for every layer I've done this. Now you've got the choice of if you want to set these forward or back. If you set them forward they're going to peek around these corners better. But I find you can't set them forward enough to proper peek around these corners. So you could always place extra turret towers around the front like this if you want to. But I've just set mine back pretty far so even if people try and get close around the corners Hopefully they'll get killed before they get too close and can blow these turrets up. So we're now on the top floor. Like I said, I've built all this the same, but you can see everywhere this is completely blocked off. I've just put my door up here to get in. Then once you come in, you can see how much room you've got. I've built this whole thing out of cliff platforms, and I've used as many as I can in this area. Now I've tried to layer it out with bridges, but they don't really seem to work around here. But the way I've built it is I've staggered it so you have different floors. You could also build these as floors, so you build cliff platforms opposite each other and then put foundations and ceilings across and make solid floors the whole way through. But I've just layered it like this because I find it easier. You may be able to find some kind of bridge to build, but it's such a vertical base that I'd probably just navigate it with a trinidon. You can see I've completely layered out this entire bottom floor, this is what I meant. So there's a lot more room if you do it like this. You just have to find a way to get to each floor. Building like this, you've also got a lot of room underneath still, whether you want to store dinos or whatever you want to do down here. I would probably just place a couple of turrets on the floor just in case anyone gets in here. You also need to be careful, I'm right at the top of the base now, and as you're looking at the base, in the top left, there's another little tiny entrance. It's not big enough to fit through, but there's so many exploits in Ark nowadays, I'm sure someone could get through there. So I'd probably place a couple of turrets anywhere around here that I could, maybe a little tower there, just to be looking up. Could place a couple of turrets down there, just in case anyone got in position and tried to Pelagornis through or anything like that. Now I'll put this as an official spot, because technically you can build it on official, so this middle line that I'm looking at now of turrets is built on official settings. So as you can see from the outside it looks very similar, we've got just as much firepower. However I built it with foundations and then pillars. You have to set this back a little bit to be able to fit two rows of pillars in here. And then I put walls front and back and this is enough to stop a Tranodon C spinning in. So all these cliff platforms I've also built on official. So as you can see you can still get a lot of cliff platforms in here. However, unfortunately, you can't build on any of these platforms. I mean, there may be a way, but I've been trying to do it for a long time and I can't work out how to build on them, so I don't think you can. 
You can see there's three foundations down there or four foundations that I've managed to build on, but that's it. So the reason I still put this in as an official spot is because you can build on these little bits, although it doesn't give you much room. But if I was to build on an official, I would only do it if I was in a huge tribe and we wanted a space for breeding. So if I was looking for a spot for an out of the way breeding base, this would be perfect because you could still put the cliff platform so you could still get all the dinos in here. You're just going to struggle to make much of it as a proper base, or at least for all the turrets you'll need to defend it, there's better spots. Coming in at number two, we have a spot that everyone knows about. The Sanctuary has some really good spots, but this is arguably the best rat hole there is. This one's at about 50.9, 47.2. It's right next to the swamp, so we're on ground level. This way is the swamp, just down there, and the other way is towards the center of the Sanctuary. So coming from the swamp, as you go between the archway of these two buildings, you go to the left, look up, and there's a little tiny hole up there. So the main reason this is such an OP spot is because you can't fit a Trandron up here, so you have to grapple up, and look how long and small the entrance is. That is the only way to get in here. So if you build this right, you don't need a lot of firepower, and it's very easy to defend. I'll just show you around the base quick. As we come up, there's a nice flat spot up here that you can build in. Then as we head down, there's our entrance just there on the right. Keep going past the entrance. We have another little ledge here we can build more things on. This would be ideal for a turret tower. And then the main base opens up as you head down even further. So we've got all this ground bit here. Then as we head further down into these tree root bits, this is where the main base opens up. This is surprisingly roomy in here. There's always extra little bits as well that you can always hide in. But this is quite a big base for such a small entrance. So let's see what we can do about defending this. So as you can see I've blocked off the path to walk up to it with just dino gates and a row of spikes. This isn't really going to stop anyone if they want to get past but it's just to let people know that we're here and to warn them to not come too close. You can see I've chucked down large bear traps all the way around. This is so that people can't just race a run all the way in and destroy our turret tower there. This was the side I was concerned we had the least protection because of these tree roots, so I've blocked them off as much as I can. Then, outside the main base, we've gone for a nice little hexagonal design. There's no need to not do a square design, I just thought this kind of covers a bit more angles, and, more importantly, it looks cool. And this can very much be about mind games as well. If people see a little one by one tower outside, they're going to think there's not much inside. If they see a nicely designed tower with a lot of firepower, they're going to think there's going to be a lot of firepower inside. It's not even worth trying to raid this base. That's not how everyone thinks, it's just how some people think. So you could be deterring people away. The trouble is with being here, it's quite a high area. So people could get above you and drop dinos onto the tower. So if you wanted to, you could always set it back further so that it's directly under this little bridge here. But anyway, as we come to the main base, I've built with a tech generator, which is really handy because then we can just place random turrets around like this. You can see I've put a heavy up there just on the wall as we come in. And that's more to kind of catch people off guard. Like they're going to be looking at the main tower out there. They're not going to see this heavy, you know, it might kill one of them once. And it's just going to slow people down a little bit. So as we come up into the entrance, you can see straight away on our left, there's a couple little ledges. So I've just placed a heavy on each of these ledges. These can shoot pretty much straight down, so they're going to be shooting people. These will get blown up pretty soon, but it's just to slow people down. And then as we come into the main base, you can see I've hung a tower up there straight away. So because of how high I built that tower, people are not going to be getting close to it. You could even build it up a little bit higher if you want and put the turrets on high. I just didn't want it being so high that people could just jump straight in and then drop down into the main base. But, as you can see, we've put more turrets on each of these ledges. So as soon as anyone gets in, they're going to be getting shot from above, below, and straight in front. Now, them lower turrets, at least, I would put on players only. And I would make this just a bit of a pit of death. So I'd put all spikes around so that if anyone managed to throw dinos out here, they just get stuck down in these spikes and the turrets aren't bothering to shoot them because they'll be stuck. The higher turrets you could put on players and tames and things, but then lower turrets I'd probably put mostly on players only, for that reason. But that's even if they manage to throw anything out. As soon as they get close to here, they're going to be getting shot. Their armor's already going to be damaged from these turrets, and as soon as they get in here, they're going to get destroyed by all these turrets. If you wanted more defense, you've also got this little ledge down here that you could also put more turrets on if you wanted to. You could just hang them off the edge, or you could build a whole tower there, it's entirely up to you. But personally, I don't see how people would get in like this. This is such an easy place to defend, and such a difficult, awkward thing to raid. Coming in at number three, 
we have another spot that a lot of people know about. We're at about 50.6, 40.1. We're not on ground floor of the sanctuary now. We're up a little bit higher. So this way we have this weird double bridge thing. And the other way we have the big round circular bridge. There's also a terminal there, which is really handy. So technically there's two entrances to this base. The first one is as you're coming up the bridge on the right here. It's a nice little crouch spot to get through. So you've just seen the other entrance, but I'll come down underneath so you can see the main way to get in. So as we're looking at this bridge under here, look up to the left. And then as we come up on our right is the base location. So as you can see, it's a big area around here. Unfortunately, it's not flat and this is going to be our downfall here. It's also not very high. But you can see it's a very large spot. We head down this little ramp down here. It opens up again a bit. There's a nice little couple of ledges up here that you can hide things in. Then, as you run left round, we've got another spot around about the same size again as the first bit. So like I say, it's a very large base location. It's just not flat, and that's going to make it very difficult for us to build in. So I'll be back once you've designed something for it. So, from the outside, we're looking very quiet. You can't see a lot, but as soon as you come to the crouch spot, you can see you're going to get plastered with turrets. I'd probably have these ones on players only because they're not going to be able to throw anything through this little gap. And being a crouch spot, you shouldn't need any more turrets than this. This should be enough to kill anyone. So that leaves that entrance pretty much blocked off. Our bigger problem, however, is to come from below. So I've just hung a little tower down here. As you can see, it covers most angles. But unfortunately, there's a lot of little spots that people can hide around. It's a little bit of an awkward spot to try and defend from the outside. But with this hanging tower and them turrets down there on that ledge, this stops most angles. And again, more importantly, it's going to slow people down. If you wanted to, this whole ledge down here you could just spam out with dinosaur gates and spikes and things. And this will stop people from running these turrets down here on foot. So as you come up into the main base, you can see I've spammed it out with large bear traps. This is an attempt to try and stop people from racer running it. But you can manage to get so many turrets in here that someone would do well to have a racer good enough to be able to run all this. So obviously this is an unofficial spot, so it's pretty easy to build this turret all like this. I've just used the odd foundation, then ceilings, and then walls just to block it all off. Put our door at the top here. As you can see from the inside, it's not very neat, but it gets the job done just fine. So we were close to the turret limit, but we weren't quite on it. So as you can see down there, I've just placed down a few more turrets. And you can decide whether you want to kind of bluff people with that spot or hide all your best stuff down there. As you can see, you can just about fit a replicator and an indie forge down here. So that's just fine. So like I was saying, I've just stuck a few turrets down here. And again, it's just going to slow people down. Walled it all off. So if we want to, we can chuck all our best stuff up here. You can put a couple of bolts up there if you wanted to. Although it looks nice, I probably wouldn't put any turrets up on this ledge. Because it's such a small area for them to shoot. Someone just see spin up and blow them up. I need to be very careful with this spot because things do poke through the mesh. Like that giga I had down there is pointing right through. So you can't do breeding of big dinos down there. So, coming in at number 4, we have one for you solos out there. We're at 46.6, 59.2. And we are not up semi-high, but we're up high. So there's the tall buildings in the sanctuary. I'm just going to show us all around us, because this can be an awkward thing to try and find. There's like different levels of buildings, and we're looking for this one that we're looking at now. You can see there's a big square hole in the top of it. So as we delve down into this hole... We've got a nice little area to be landing our dinos. You can't hide much here because there's glass there. But the bit that I want to show you is in one of these corners. So, you can walk through here. And as we look down, we have a very narrow but very deep vertical hole. Now, you can't build here on official, obviously. But I'm going to show you a little design for unofficial because it's quite difficult to picture it like this. As you can see, you can build up on this main bit on official. But like I say, this bit isn't actually hidden, so I personally wouldn't build it because it's just going to attract attention to you. So I just want to show you quickly what can fit in here in terms of defending this from raiders. So, you can just about fit a turtle down here, but you have to throw it right. So you can't throw it out there. If you're in here and you throw it, it won't fit. The only way you can make it fit is if you throw it out here. You can throw it a little bit further than that, but as you can see, it's going to be awkward to try and raid this. So as you can see from the outside, you can't see a thing. Then as you get closer, I've just chucked down railings here. Railings are very awkward things because you can't walk on them. 
So anyone trying to jump over them will either keep sliding and slide down into your base and die, or they'll get stuck in them. So they're going to have to blow these up. So as we peek into the base, you can see there's turrets down there already, so we're going to be getting shot straight away. You can fit a Tyranodon down here, but it's very awkward. You have to come from the top where I was just coming from. So you'd need a very good Tyranodon to survive it. But if not, they're going to have to drop in themselves and try and blow it up with an RPG or something. But as they're dropping in, all these turrets down here are going to be shooting them. I can't see someone getting past this. We've also placed turrets on the wall here. That's going to be very awkward for people to blow up. So as we drop down into the base, we're going to go under these turrets. We have a little hatch frame here that we can get in. So we're going to come in on our top floor. We've got our crafting station. So we've got fabricators, we've got smithies, we've got chem benches. It's all the stuff we would need. As we go down into our next floor, we've got an indie forge there that you can access. We've got a couple of vaults and we have all our cryo fridges down there. As you open this little door, we've got our bed here. We want to always try and keep our bed protected. And then under this hatch frame, we have our tech generator. Yeah, as you can see there, we've placed it on the floor, so it's harder to destroy. So like I said earlier, I would mix up all these turrets. I would have them almost all on survivors only as they can't really chuck soakers down here. I would make sure I have one or two on tamed creatures though. This is so people don't put a C4 on a tame and then send it down here to blow your things up. Coming in at number 5, again we have a common spot, we're at 44.4, 33.2, right next to a terminal again which is really good for us, so we're right on the north side of the city, up against the wall, and we're looking for this ramp heading down from the terminal, as you come down the ramp there'll be a little opening down here on your left, and I want to show you this spot because you see it built wrong so many times, and like I said I'm not the best builder, this isn't built the best you possibly could, but a lot of the times, you see a lot of turrets in this base, and you can often raid it with one turtle or one PT, depending on how it's built. So I just want to show you an idea of how to build it. Again, unfortunately, you can't build here on official. It's only on unofficial. There's not actually a lot of room in here, but we're going to make the best out of it we can. So let me show you. So you can see we're still very hidden from the outside, and a lot of even unofficial servers don't like people building near terminals. So make sure you check the rules of your server before you build it. So as soon as we look down, we're seeing bear traps. We're seeing large bear traps. This is so that anyone who jumps down here to try and rocket run the turrets is going to get trapped and killed. The large bear traps are so people can't chuck stegos down here and paraces and things. I've also chucked the layers of railings down because they're very awkward to try and jump over even if all the bear traps are gone. So you saw the turret wall there. You can see I've set it back as far as I can really. And that's so that people can't stand up on here and soak or get an angle to RPG them as well. You can see here you're already going to be getting shot. But even if you shot an RPG here, it's going to get blown up straight away. It won't get close to them turrets. And hopefully it won't get close enough to destroy any of them bear traps down there either. So they're going to have to get rid of all them bear traps themselves. So I've trapped as much turrets on this wall as I possibly can. Because it's the only place we're going to be able to get turrets. The idea of all this design is for people to look at this. And just realise that it's going to be too much of a pain and too annoying to try and raid. With that many turrets, any person who jumped down here is going to get insta-killed. And any dino should get stuck in all these traps. So I've put our door right down in the far corner. As you can see, I could have set this back ever so slightly more, but I feel like it should be enough. But in general, you want to set it back as far as you can. So as we come into the base, you can see we can't fit an indie forge down here. Our usual crafting bits, we have our chem benches, our fabricators and our smithy. We've trapped our generator behind here. So as you can see, you can access all of these. These vaults can also access, just a little bit awkward sometimes. There we go, you can see you can access that and that one. Then because we can't fit an indie forge I've chucked down loads of normal forges down here. These won't be far off what an indie forge would do but it's just very awkward when they're all separate. We've chucked our bed in there that you can spawn on. Chucked our cryo fridges back up there on the ground so they're harder to destroy. And I've also placed a hidden cryo fridge behind here. There's a very good reason I don't like this spot and that's because for the amount of turrets you need to defend it because of the small entrance, you really can't fit a lot of things in here. Like you could definitely design it better than this, but realistically you're never going to fit a lot in here. Also in this spot when you place things down, it's very easy to be clipping through the wall and for people to be able to see the back of your base. 
But as you can see, that's the best way I could find to defend it. Hopefully people are going to see it and realise how much of a pain in the ass it would be to try and raid. So as you can see here quickly, this is why you can't put a replicator or an Indie Forge down here. I mean, technically you could if you really wanted to, but don't. So at number 6, we're at 61.7, 47.1. And I know I've already said that I think that vertical rat hole earlier is one of the best ones. However, if not equal, this spot is a very close second. So I'm sure most of you have seen this spot. There's the southern entrance to the sanctuary there. You come in the entrance, turn right, and it's on this first ramp leading up. So it's nice and out the way, it's not in the main flow of traffic. As you come to the right hand side of the ramps, you can see there's a little entrance here. You have to go in, kind of go back on yourself a little bit. Then we have a really long narrow corridor that we have to run through. And that long narrow corridor is why this is such a good spot. Once you're inside, you can see how huge it is. And this is arguably one of the best locations on the entire map. It's a very contested spot because of the sheer size of it and the small entrance. So if you want to claim this spot, you've got to be prepared to fight for it. One of the biggest issues of this spot is that people can mesh bite with Gigas through most of these walls. And that can be a right pain. But anyway, we've seen the tiny entrance. We've seen the sheer size of this base. So let's see what we can make out of it. So I've opted for a nice 2x2 tower outside the base. I've had to push it forward this far, otherwise you could just line and sight it from the ramp. So if your tower's this far forward, it should protect you from every angle. Now I can't stress this enough, unless you've got transmitters and things, you need to make sure that you've got the outside of your base protected well. If not, let's say you're just starting off and you've just got a few heavies inside on a little turret wall and nothing outside, people can just fob outside your base and block you in. Now you're not going to be able to get out, they can keep trying to raid you and eventually you're going to run out of something that you need desperately whether it be metal, ammo, anything like that. And people will just play the waiting game on you and wait you out. And eventually they'll get in. So you need to make sure the outside of your base is as well protected as the inside. So once we start to head inside the base, you can see to start with, you can't see anything. Now I put these foundations here because they're awkward to jump up on. So it stops people from just sprinting at your turrets. They're gonna have to jump over this. And of course you can't just jump, you have to grapple. Obviously people can destroy these. And with that, they can then sneak up to the next foundation. So personally, I wouldn't do this, but I'm just giving you a design that you could if you wanted to. So people are going to be running in. You can see already there's three turrets that will be shooting them. I've made sure these are all tech turrets because the tech turrets are going to be doing so much damage and they're also going to be pushing them back. We've also put heavy right next to each tech turret so that they can't RPG there because the heavy will destroy it before it destroys the tech turret. So if they manage to survive this far, they're going to start getting shot by four turrets now. And then as they get closer, five, six turrets. And the closer you get, the more turrets are going to be shooting you. So you would do well to get this far. Then once you push all the way in, you can see there's a massive wall here. And nobody's going to be surviving this. I would even consider pushing it back a little bit further. This gives up a little bit of room in the base. But it's going to make it even harder for people to raid. Now this should be set back far enough so that people can't destroy them as they rocket run. But like I say, setting it back even further than this is just going to cement the base and make it even stronger. So as we head inside the base, you can see I've just blocked off all the floor. This gives us two layers. So there's so much room in here. You could even put another death wall further back if you really want to. So you put quite a big crafting station down here, but you can have it even bigger if you wanted to. We've got all the things we'll need. We've got a replicator down here. Again, you can put two replicators down if you really want to. Now, I don't like compact bases. I'm a big fan of open plan bases so as you can see down here we've got our stairs we've got all this room down here whether it be for our dino breeding probably we've got our main tech jenny down here in the wall that's going to be powering our death wall as you can see so down here is all the room you could ever need for breeding you could breed everything you need to down here but i've just put a little tower up there with just four turrets on this is just in case anyone gets in it's going to, again going to slow them down more we could always be putting more turrets along this wall here if we want to. Like I said, we could do another death wall. You could put anything you want around here. It's such a large base that the turret area resets, so you can keep putting more turrets down. So in the back of our base, we've got our vault wall. All the vaults we can need, we can put more in there if we want. We've got our fridges, preserving bins. We've got a big cryo fridge cabinet. But as you can see, you've still got so much room in this base, so you can do whatever you want in here. I've just chucked our bed behind there. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I've also done two videos now of the best base spots in the Sunken Forest on Extinction. If you're more of a Sunken Forest kind of guy or girl, be sure to check that out. But for now, this has been my top six base locations on Extinction in the Sanctuary. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.